Hello. In this module, we will talk about a continuous random variable which has a uniform PDF, the probability density function. The uniform PDF arises when there is no a priori information available about the distribution except for the endpoints. For example, we may, may not know when an official call will be made, but it must be made say between 10 am and 5 pm. In such situations, we model the random phenomena as a uniform random variable. In this module, our objectives are to compute the uniform cumulative distribution function from the uniform density function and to compute various moments which include the mean, the mean square value and the variance of a uniform random variable. Let us begin by assuming a uniform random variable say x, let x be a uniform random variable. Notationally, it is denoted as x has a distribution or distributed as a uniform distribution in the interval a to b. So, let x be a uniform random variable in the interval or distributed uniformly in the interval a to b. Then this notation, mathematical notation is read as here x is the random variable, the uniform random variable this notation is read distributed or distributed as this denotes the uniform distribution. So, uniformly and this shows the interval, this shows the interval. So, it is read as x is a random variable distributed uniformly in the interval a to b. Such a random variable is characterized by its PDF, the probability density function denoted as lowercase f subscript capital X of small x. It is defined as 1 over b minus a for x lying in the interval a to b and it is 0 otherwise. Graphically it is denoted as, it is represented as this x and this is the uniform PDF in the interval A to B. The height of this distribution, this density function must be 1 over B minus A for the area under the PDF curve must be 1 from the properties. This A is less than B and a and b lie in the interval from minus infinity to infinity they belong to any real number. Just for sake of illustration let us assume that this is our zero line though a may be negative as well both a and b may be negative positive anything. Let us first compute the cumulative distribution function CDF from the PDF. We know that the CDF denoted by capital F is given in terms of 
the PDF as integration minus infinity to x small f x u du where u is a dummy variable. Here we can identify three different intervals for the value of x. x when x is less than or equal to a when x is somewhere between a and b and when x is greater than b. So, let us consider these three cases. So, case 1 when x is less than or equal to a. In this case the CDF capital F x x is equal to integration minus infinity to x f x u d u, but this f x is 0 for x less than a and therefore, we are integrating 0 to yield 0. So, the C D F is 0 when x is less than a. Now, consider case 2 when x is greater than a, but less than b. In this case, now the C D F can be written as now the integration is from minus infinity to x. So, it can be broken into two integrals minus infinity to a f x x d x plus a to x because x is somewhere between a to b. So, a to x f x u d u the first integral yields 0 because f x x is 0 in this interval. So, it is 0 plus now this integral here f x is 1 over b minus a. So, it is integration let us write it down clearly integration a to x 1 over b minus a t u. So, when we simplify it we get 0 plus 1 over b minus a now d u yields u and when we put the limits a to so we get x minus a and therefore in this case the c d f becomes x minus a upon b minus a and finally case 3 when x is greater than or equal to b in this case the c d f can be written as integration minus infinity to a f x x d x plus integration a to b f x x d x plus integration b to x whatever is the value of x which is greater than b f x u d u. Now, the first integral is 0 as before the second integral is simply 1 because f x x is 1 is 1 over b minus a and when d x is integrated you get x and when you put the limits a to b we get d minus a upon b minus a which is 1 and plus again beyond d the f x is 0. So, the integration becomes 0. So, what we get finally is 1. So, this way we get the complete C D F of the uniform random variable x as follows. So, to summarize therefore, the C D F is equal to 0 for x less than equal to a it is x minus a upon b minus a for x in the interval a to b and it is 1 for x greater than equal to b. Let us sketch it. So, 
so this is x this is f x x this is 0 we had assumed a to be some a and b to be some positive numbers such that a less than b so we see that before a the cdf is 0 so it is 0 from a to b it is a straight line given by x minus a upon b minus a that is easy to see when x is a we get 0 a minus a upon b minus a which is 0 when x is b we get b minus a upon b minus a which is 1 so we get a straight line from 0 to 1 say let us just mark this point correctly so here there is b and beyond b the distribution is 1 always which it has to be as per the properties of the CDF. So this is a uniform CDF you can mark this value as 1 here. Let us now compute various moments of the uniform distribution. Let us compute moments of a uniform random variable. So the first moment that we compute is the mean value E of x also denoted as x bar or mu x or just mu. Okay. So it goes by various different notations but it is the mean value or the expected value or the average value of the random variable x. So it is given as by definition integration minus infinity to infinity x f x x d x which for our case because this f x x is 0 beyond the interval a to b we can simply make the limits of the integral a to b x and in that interval f x x is simply 1 upon b minus a d x which is 1 over b minus a integration x dx is x square by 2 and the limits a to b which yields 1 over b minus a into b square minus a square upon 2 uh, b minus b square minus a square can, can be factored as b minus a into b plus a b minus a into e plus a or a plus b upon b minus a into 2. So, b minus a and b minus a cancels and we get the mean value as a plus b by 2. It is a standard result which we should memorize. So, we have this important result as x bar or e x or mu is equal to a plus b by 2 for a uniform random variable. Let us now compute the mean square value. Let us look at the mean square value. The mean square value is given by expectation of x square which is defined as integration minus infinity to infinity small x square small f x x dx. Again the interval is from a to b for our case. So x square f x x is 1 over b minus a into dx which can be written as 1 over b minus a into x square dx integrates to x cube by 3 and the limits are put a to b which is 1 over b minus a into 
b cube minus a cube by 3 that is simple integral now b cube minus a cube can be expanded as b minus a let us write it down it can be expanded as b minus a into b square plus a b plus a square upon b minus a was there already so b minus a into 3 now b minus a and b minus a cancel and therefore the mean square value is obtained as e of x square which is also written as x square bar is obtained as a square plus a b plus b square by 3 again this result should be memorized it's an important result and this mean square value now we know the mean value and the mean square value we can now compute the variance let us now compute the variance of the uniform random variable so variance which is denoted by sigma square and we know that we already worked it out in a previous module that sigma square can be written as x square bar minus x bar square which is x square bar is a square plus a b plus b square upon 3 minus x bar is a plus b by 2 this is square so we get a square plus a b plus b square on 3 minus a square plus 2 a b plus b square upon 4 now we can take lcm and simplify let us do it so the lcm is 12 we get simply 3 4 is 12 so 4 a square plus 4ab plus 4b square minus now 4 3s are 12 so 3a square minus 6ab minus 3b square and 4a square minus 3a square we get a square plus 4ab minus 6ab we get minus 2ab plus 4b square minus 3b square we get plus b square upon 12 but the numerator can be written as a minus b whole square which is same as b minus a whole square by 12 so equal to b minus a whole square by 12 and this is the variance and again an important result which we should keep in mind we should memorize this result And finally, we can look at the standard deviation, which is simply the square root of the variance. So, finally, the standard deviation denoted by sigma is simply the square root of the variance, and therefore, it is simply b minus a upon root 12 which is p minus a upon 2 root 3. So, these are all important results and we have computed them using the definitions of the mean, the mean square value, the variance and finally the standard deviation. So, in this module, we looked at a very important continuous random variable known as uniform random variable it is used in situations where there is no a priori information available about the distribution it is frequently used in communication engineering in queuing systems and in many other areas so that's all for this module thank you